I have had a monthly facial at the med spa every single month since September of 2013, except for two months during the COVID lockdowns. So I've had a lot of opportunities to determine the facial services and the treatments that I like and get value from versus the services and the treatment types that I don't care for and I will not schedule again. So today I'm sharing all of the facial services that I've had. In fact, I just had one of these treatments two days ago and that will definitely come up shortly because it's one of the ones that I feel has given me the best results and the best outcomes. And I'm gonna get into the amount of downtime that comes along with these treatments, the benefits, the beneath the surface science that's happening that I totally nerd out about, and probably what you're interested in most, I'm gonna share what I paid for each type of service. So if that sounds interesting, stick around. But first, let me get a little business out of the way. Welcome to Strategically Helpful. I'm Allie and I'm really glad that you're here. On this channel, I'm focusing on two main goals. First, I love talking in general, but I specifically love talking about things that I'm truly passionate about and discussing them is genuinely fun for me. And secondly, I wanna share personal insights and information that might be helpful for you. So whether it's creative and crafty gifting projects like making diaper cakes or DIY holiday projects, sharing my tips and tricks for organizing stuff in both the digital and the physical space, or talking about how I'm exploring wellness and self-care practices, what's working for me and what I love or maybe what I don't love. My intention with each video is to create content that's enjoyable for me to make, even though I have no idea what I'm doing, and that's valuable for you by providing insights and helpful knowledge that supports your goals strategically. So if that sounds like your kind of content, please consider subscribing and check out my other videos. Now, let's get into it. I'm excited for this episode of my Healthy Obsession series, but first let me set the table in regards to my skin and my overall skincare goals. So I'm 45 years old and I live in sunny, often hot, and almost always dry Las Vegas, Nevada. I don't have any skin sensitivities or allergies that I'm aware of, but I do have acne scars from bad acne in college. So I completed a course of Accutane, which basically shrunk my oil glands and has really reduced my body's uh, oil production. So my skin is generally on the dry side, though I still get a bit oily in my T-zone, so I'm gonna call it combination skin. Uh, I've been into skincare since my preteen years, but my passion really took off after being diagnosed with stage 2A melanoma at the age of 29. So I grew up in South Florida in the 80s where sunbathing was just a normal part of life. And I even worked at a tanning salon in the late 90s while attending college here in Las Vegas. So by the time I was diagnosed with melanoma, I had racked up a lot of UV damage. Thankfully, I came out of that experience highly motivated and very aware of the need to repair and improve my skin's health. So that's what I had in mind when I decided to explore the services at the med spa. All right, so now that you've got a bit of my background, let's dive into my whole facial services journey. So I've had 141 facials over the past 11 plus years. I've broken them down into top level categories to make it easier for me to discuss and explore how those categories have contributed to the transformation of me at 33 and that before photo to me now at 45. So the first two types of facials on the list are the hydrofacial and the signature serum-based facials. So I've had very few of these treatments compared to all the other services, and that's because I personally don't derive a lot of value from these type of facials. So I am a chatterbox, and I was actually just recently diagnosed with ADHD. So the appeal and the prospect of a pampering, relaxing, de-stressing facial is honestly a foreign concept to me. But I approach getting facials and skincare sort of like I approach going to the gym or brushing my teeth. There's not a lot of evidence of the benefit immediately, but consistency and maintaining a routine will absolutely deliver results in the end. So the hydrofacial is the first on the list. So I've had this one time three years ago, and it had just been added to the menu of services that I get to select from each month, and I decided to try it out. And 
that brings me to a, a little quick note about my med spa. So I have gone to one single med spa for all of these services. It's called Advanced Aesthetics in Las Vegas, Nevada. I went into Advanced Aesthetics shortly after that before photo was taken for a Botox and a filler consultation. And they did what good service practitioners should and will do. They helped to steer me away from some of the services that I wanted but weren't in my best interest at the time and instead educated me on the best course of action to achieve my skincare and anti-aging goals, which was to get into a regular facial regimen. I met with Sam and she passed over an easy guaranteed sale in favor of offering me guidance and insight. And this video is not sponsored by them. And I do want to extend a very special thank you to Julie and Megan who exported and sent me my entire client history so that I could crunch all of these services and numbers and dollar amounts and do this video. So Advanced Aesthetics offers a facial membership program where I pay $95 a month and I get to select a facial off of their menu of services each month. And then on top of that, I can also pay an upgrade fee to get kind of like higher tiered treatments and I can pay uh, add-on fees to extend the treatment past my face and include my neck and my chest so the hydrofacial, for example, had an upgrade fee of $55 on top of my $95 fee. So it came in at $150 for that one treatment, but that was my membership price. So it is possible, maybe likely, that if you walked in and booked a service off the street at a med spa, you might pay some more. So the hydrofacial is a water-based suction treatment that's a handheld wand that first cleanses your skin and exfoliates it, and then a suction action extracts anything like clogging up your pores. And then finally, there's a serum that is delivered to the skin that helps to hydrate and glow up the skin. And I do think this is a good facial and can be a good option if you're feeling like your skin is a bit dull and if you're wanting a glow up and kind of like a hydrating boost. But generally, I've got those bases covered and I try to address those areas in my regular routine at home. So this is a service that I don't plan on getting again. And next up is the signature serum-based facials, which came in at $665 for eight different treatments. And also microdermabrasion facials, which came in at $1,045 for 11 different sessions. So the signature facials generally include standard components like you get a steam, then you get a face mask, then you get some kind of like extraction and exfoliation, maybe get an enzyme mask, and then you get the application of some serums or products. And similar to the hydrofacial, a microdermabrasion facial provides exfoliation and resurfacing by basically like sanding your skin using again a, a suction sort of kind of handheld device and very fine like crystals. So these facials are not doing a lot uh, by way of repairing and strengthening the internal structural framework of my skin, which is made up of collagen and elastin fibers, which is what gives our skin its firmness, strength, and flexibility. And unfortunately, I did a real number on my collagen and my elastin fibers with all that UV damage early on. So I'm already starting at a deficit on top of the fact that my body's natural collagen and elastin production is declining more and more every year as I get older. So as I've learned more about the treatments and the services available at Advanced Aesthetics that help to promote or initiate the production of collagen and elastin, the more those kinds of services make an appearance in my monthly lineup and these other facials that aren't at, as good at that task have been falling off. Which brings me to the top four categories of facials that have become my go-tos in recent years. The first one being chemical peels. So in a nutshell, the way I think of a chemical peel is kind of in the context similar to a cinder block wall. So you have cinder blocks and then you have the mortar. So the cinder blocks are the skin cells and then there's a connective kind of substance that keeps those skin cells together. So when you get a chemical peel, the peel loosens that mortar. So as those top cells stop being so secure, they will eventually either flake or peel off. And then there's also some other action that's happening deeper in the dermis that's helping to encourage faster skin cell turnover. And here I think of those coin pusher amusement games where the coins get kind of pushed and fall off the ledge. 
And that's how I envision the skin cell turnover. I want to do whatever I can to add new coins or cells to my collection so that the old coins or the old cells clear out. Okay, the next peel in this category is the Modified Jesner Peel, which I have had 12 times at a total of $1,140. Now this is a love-hate situation because I really loved the benefits from the peel, but I really am not a fan of any treatment that has an extended downtime because I work full-time as a civil servant and I oftentimes have to interact with coworkers or the public or counterparts in other municipalities. And following a Jesner peel, my face would flake and peel and I would get very red. And it would be that way for at least seven days. So it was a real challenge trying to schedule these facials so that I didn't have to attend any work events or important meetings where I you know, appeared to be sunburned and molting and basically just out of sorts. But thankfully, Advanced Aesthetics started offering the VI Precision Plus Peel from Vitality Institute a few years ago. I'm just gonna call it the VI Peel. And that peel is more aligned with my skincare goals of treating sun damage, hyperpigmentation, and melasma than the modified Jesner. And the overall experience of the VI peel is so much more pleasant for me personally than the modified Jesner. And so in a nutshell here, both peels are a blend of different ingredients that all work synergistically together to do exactly what I was saying. They help the top layer uh, slough off, they help to encourage turnover of skin cells. The VI peel helps to address pigmented and discolored skin cells. Um, so there is a little bit of take home homework with the VI peel where you go home, you have to wash it off after a specific amount of hours. The, serum that they apply, and then you reapply another uh, coating of the serum the next morning, and then again, uh, I think later on that day, they send you home with a little booklet, so you kind of get to stay on top of all of that. But in my three experiences having this facial, just the overall experience is so much more pleasant for me. It's just a milder kind of peel, whereas the Jesner peel, I would flake like, or I wouldn't flake, I would peel like sheets of skin. Uh, with the VI peel, I just get a little bit of flaking. And, and for me, the peeling action itself is not an indicator of what's happening deep down in the layers of the dermis. So it doesn't necessarily, in fact, I appreciate the fact that I don't have layers of skin peeling off. And the other thing that I like about the VI peel is that I know that the flaking will start three days after the facial. So I'm better able to schedule the facial and then know when the peeling will start. And by the time I go back to work on Monday, the peeling or the flaking is so minimal, it's very manageable. So they only added the VI peel in 2021. And like I said, I've only had three of them so far, but this is now my go-to and the modified Jesner is definitely a thing <laughs> in the rear view mirror. And so the three VI peels that I've had come in at $600 because there is an upgrade fee of 105 on top of the monthly $95 a month. So every time I get that peel, it is $200. And then the one final peel that I put into this category is a chemical peel with a dermaplaning. So dermaplaning is where the service practitioner basically manually exfoliates the layer of the skin using a really sharp blade, kind of looks like a scalpel. Um, and it's basically like just having the top layer of your skin shaved. So it shaves off all your peach fuzz and then also shaves off kind of like the top layer of dry skin. And I've only had this treatment twice because both times it broke me out, which was a real bummer because before it broke me out, I had the smoothest, most glass-like skin ever. So the peel with the dermaplaning is not in my rotation because of that reason, but I did really like how smooth my skin was afterwards until it wasn't. So I schedule my chemical peels usually in the spring, typically in March, to clear out any of the stubborn, like dull layers of skin coming out of winter time. And then again in the fall. So I actually have my next VI peel scheduled in two months from now. If that's something that you're interested in, just let me know in the comments below. And moving on to the next category within my facial groups is lasers. So lasers is a big category for me. I have had 74 facials 
uh, laser facials and they come in at $10,500. So essentially half of everything that I've paid for these uh, facial treatments in the last 11 years has been lasers. So there's three types of lasers in this group or laser treatments. The first of which is the Spectra laser. I have had 27 of these and they come in at $2,565. So the Spectra laser is known as either, I think it's called the Hollywood Spectra or the Hollywood laser, I don't know, because it's a really great treatment to get like right before a big event. And so the treatment itself is by far the most just pleasant, you know, nothing burger as far as lasers go because uh, first what happens is the practitioner will uh, cover your face with a charcoal-based serum, and then the handheld laser, uh, she runs over your face, or he, and the handheld heats the serum up so it kind of like fuses with that top layer of your skin. And then on second pass, when she, they roll over your face, the laser like connects with that charcoal and it makes like a popping sound and basically it zaps off the top layer of your skin, which leaves a brighter, more fresh complexion. And this laser is entirely painful for me. I don't need numbing cream. And other than that popping sound when the laser hits the charcoal, there is nothing like remarkably even notable about this treatment. So I can literally head right from the med spa out to dinner, I just throw on some makeup. And so I like to get this treatment in my birthday month, which is April and also in October, because those are months where I do a lot of things on the weekends and I don't want to have any downtime kind of taking me out of commission for the weekend. Plus it's just a really great quick refresh uh, and I like the combination of having the VI peel and then right after that I do the Spectra peel. So it's kind of like two chemical peels back to back, but the downtime is so much better and improved. Um, and so there's kind of some logic there in having those back to back. So next up is a photo facial or also called an IPL or an intense pulp light laser. And so I have had 23 of these facials coming in at $2,875. Now this one does require numbing cream. And even with that, I still feel a little bit, it's like a rubber band snap sensation with each pulse. It's not uh, awfully painful, but there is definitely a sensation. And then after that, laser there is no redness or like concerns about any needed downtime other than you know I might have gotten some numbing cream in my hairline and the photo facial is one that I got regularly early on because of how awesome it is at handling sunspots and discoloration and it's actually the in most insane experience because a few days after that IPL photo facial laser the pigmented spots on your face start to kind of move to the surface of the skin and they look like dark coffee grounds like the size of your pores on the surface of your skin and then all of a sudden one day they just flake off and the spot is either much much lighter or gone entirely it is the weirdest thing to like witness so the IPLs were a great treatment for me early on when I had all that pigmentation that you saw in the before photo. And I still will get an IPL photo facial occasionally, but I've been managing and preventing my pigment from developing so much better nowadays that I don't need this treatment as much anymore as often as I did in the beginning. And so I will schedule an IPL on a case by case basis. And basically I know I can go in and the laser will vaporize them and they will break up and they will disappear. So the largest service in the lasers category is the clear and brilliant lasers. So I have had 124 of these coming in at $5,060. And this laser, it is no joke. Like I insist, I make a rule of thumb that I wear my numbing cream for at least an hour. And even then there are some sensitive areas on my skin that uh, definitely, you know, are a little more tender than others. And then after this treatment, your skin is just incredibly bright red. It looks like it's sunburned and it kind of stays that way for a couple hours. But by the next day, all the redness is gone. And the only thing that you can kind of tell that you had a treatment is because your skin has this like sandpaper texture. And that's the little areas of skin that get crusted over from where the heat of the laser kind of creates like an injury 
in the skin tissue and that is what's happening with these lasers is the heat communicates to the skin tissues that there has been an injury. And so they leap into action and start to rebuild that skin tissue, sending growth factors and collagen and elastin kind of repair teams to improve the skin. And so I love the Clear and Brilliant Facial for that reason, because it is helping to not only address kind of discoloration on the top layers, but then also there is this like injury response action that's happening that's starting to kind of rebuild my collagen fibers. I did learn the hard way. I will never book this appointment in August, and this is absolutely a cold weather treatment only. Um, because the post-treatment uh, heat is so intense. So I make it a point to book this facial starting in November, and then I will do a series of like three or four. So again, that's coming up in a couple months. If you want to uh, watch me go through the process, let me know. And finally, the facial that uh, I saved for last because it is my absolute number one favorite uh, for what it has done and the results that I've seen is getting microneedling with PRP. So I have had 26 micro needling facials across all 11 years and totaling $8,750. So micro needling is a handheld device that has all these little tiny needles that uh, puncture the skin and they create these like micro injuries and like little micro channels in the skin. And those small injuries stimulate the body's natural healing process similar to the Clear and Brilliant. And that healing process promotes the production of collagen and elastin. And then on top of that, PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. And so they draw your blood before the treatment and they'll spin the blood to separate the red blood cells from your white blood cells in your plasma. And then they will take that plasma serum and they will apply it to the treatment area before starting the microneedle. And so then when they do the treatment, the needles actually push the PRP into the micro channel injuries. And then they'll also go over the treatment area after they're done and add another layer so that uh, while your skin is still kind of open and those channels are still kind of open, that, um, that concentration of PRP, which is filled with growth factors and like all these really phenomenal ingredients that help to enhance the healing, kind of restorative, re rejuvenating, like repairing um, effects that microneedling kind of um, initiates and, and promotes. So numbing is absolutely required. Yep, I really drive looking like this. For a microneedle. And then I figure the two or three days following the treatment, I'm gonna have some mild redness and I'm gonna have um, a little bit of puffiness. And so I make sure not to have any kind of sweating activities in the 48 or so hours afterwards, because I don't want those micro injuries to potentially get clogged or filled with like sweat and bacteria and oil. And then I also try to avoid applying makeup and sunscreen in those first like 24 to 48 hours. And if I do, I will apply something with a mineral sunscreen so it's not soaking into those micro injuries, but it's just sitting on the top. Um, but microneedling has been the best treatment that I have found for helping me to address my lingering acne scars. And on top of that is it has improved my skin tone and my fine lines and my wrinkles. And so I get a series of microneedling in the summertime here in Las Vegas because when it is triple degree heat, um, I'm not often leaving the house or doing anything on the weekends. And so I can kind of accommodate the like downtime and avoiding uh, sunscreen and kind of avoiding like heading out. Uh, and like I said, I just had one two days ago. I have a little bit of redness on my neck. Now, one thing that does, I feel, make a difference for me. In fact, I do know. Um, I have actually had three micro needles without PRP. The first time I did a comparison to see how long that like redness lasted with PRP versus re without PRP. And there was a distinct faster recovery on the session where I used PRP. And because of that, I always want to get PRP. But unfortunately, there were two times 
where I did not do the proper prep leading up to the treatment and drawing my blood. You know, my veins just weren't playing along and they weren't able to do the blood draw. So that was kind of a lesson that now I make sure to prehydrate really well in the days before my microneedle treatments. And in fact, I do it for all of the treatments. Same thing for the Clear and Brilliant and also the chemical peels because hydrated skin is really the best starting point for all of the processes and the actions that I'm trying to promote and seek with all of these facial treatments that I get. Um, and then on top of hydrating, I also make sure to stop exfoliating in the week leading up to my services. So no Retin-A or scrubs or enzyme peels or anything. I just focus those seven days in advance on hydrating uh, both my skin with products and then also just hydrating my body. So, uh, that was $23,350 worth of facial treatments. Uh, give this video a like if you found it interesting and informative, maybe a little wild to hear. And let me know if I left anything out or if you want more information on any of these services. Um, and in fact, that 23,000 on these facial treatments is actually just a fraction of what I spent in total at the med spa over the last uh, 11 years. So check out the next video in this series where I dive into the other treatments and procedures that I have had done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. And until then, have a good one.